Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. My name is Dr. Ray. I am your humble guide today through the wonderful world of pet food. Um, I am a small animal general practitioner. Um, I have this channel where I answer your questions and I take suggestions on what you guys want me to review, what do you want me to talk about, and I had a request for um, a review of the pet food company Farmina. I have never heard of Farmina before this, so thank you for suggesting it to me. We are going to work through it. Um, I will say I did look at the website. They have some very beautiful, beautiful, beautiful packaging, um, some very interesting ingredients. So if that's something that you enjoy, um, come hang out with us and we are going to go through Farmina today. Now this is an Italian company, but you can buy it here on their website as well as on Chewy. And so this will be available to you if it ends up stacking up and meeting, you know, making the cut. And so how we're going to decide that is we are going to use the Dr. A. I invented it. It means absolutely nothing. Um, but you know, I want to have some sort of basis where we're reviewing these. I don't want to be just totally off the cuff. So um, I invented this little fun game that we play and you are welcome to play along. Um, it is the pet food scoring system one to 10. Um, and I've done this for my last several videos and so we can compare foods and we can see how they relate to each other. And so um, I will go through the point system and what points you get and what points you don't get as we go ahead and work through this. So the food that I was asked about was the cod, pumpkin, and orange adult, medium, and maxi formula. Um, and so this company has a lot of different formulas. They do do dog food, they do cat food. I will say that um, this food here is a grain-free diet and they do have grain-inclusive diets and so um, just a little bit of a disclaimer um, I would most likely if this ends up being you know a good company good food I would most likely recommend that you feed the grained version um, and that has to do with the uh, current research the current worry um, that the grain free diets are leading to dilated cardiomyopathy in pets that is a you know a condition of the heart a heart condition that leads to congestive heart failure and so we are currently working through that there is some evidence that this is an issue it is not necessarily an issue with the grains it is the issue with the things that are being substituted um, because we've taken those grains out and so those are the peas um, things that we call pulses legumes and we'll go through that as we go through the ingredient list today um, so that was just a little bit of a high note there, a little disclaimer before we get started. Um, the website is very good. It has all the information we need um, with the exception of the information on a dry matter basis for the guaranteed analysis. I have emailed the company and I have got that. Um, and so we'll have that information as part of our review today. All right, let's start with the package. We always start out with the front of the package. We pull out all that marketing stuff, um, you know, and see if there's any fuss there. So front of the package is very simple actually. Um, I like it. I like it when the front of the packages are simple. Uh, you've got the picture of the beautiful orange and pumpkin and cod. And cod is really interesting, and this is totally a side note here, but if you'll allow me to digress. Um, you know, uh, my son is a super fan of cod. He's six years old. We went to Spain. Beautiful, fabulous, fabulous food in Spain. And every single restaurant for the entire 10 days that we were in Spain, all he ate was cod. If there was not cod on the menu, he asked for cod. Um, and it was really funny because in Spain they call it bacala and you know everywhere you know he would say Spain has the best bacala ever so anyway um, he would probably give this diet um, a thumbs up if it were up to him so um, so there you go a little bit of a tangent there see this is why we have the, the scoring system because um, you know when I hang out with you guys sometimes I go on a tangent so medium and maxi there's not really any um, guidelines or uh, specific numbers for mini, medium and maxi. There are some specific guidelines for large breed, but mini and maxi there isn't. So that's there on the package. You've got the little no grain thing to me. They're putting that on there because they're thinking it's a good thing to me. And that's like a warning sign. That's just like a warning bell right there on the, on the package. But um, you know, you can take it or leave it on that. Uh, let's see, adult, medium, and maxi. Yeah, there's not really a whole lot on the package. You can see the little Italian flag there to show that it's um, from Italy, so not much there. Let's go to their little marketing thing here. So made without grains, 96% of proteins are from animal origin. What that means, um, I'm assuming, is that you can get proteins, people don't realize it, but from things like corn, it, it does actually provide some protein, um, soybeans, things like that. So they're saying 96% are coming from animal origins. No artificial preservatives, no grains. We've already talked about that. Uh, low glycemic index, single animal protein. Uh, the single animal protein thing, um, and we'll get into that when we get into the ingredient list, this here is 
giving the insinuation that you can use this as a a food trial or you know if you have a dog that has food allergies you can use this diet sometimes you can sometimes you can't and the reason for that is um, is depends on how the company is processing it so if a company um, and this company you know it, they make a lot of diets let's say they make a diet that has a beef you know a beef component or any other you know any other protein source that's not fish um, let's say they run that you know that protein that meat based diet you know through the plant um, and you know they don't they don't clean it they don't have to clean it I'm not saying that's dirty I'm saying just clean it to get all the meat protein out um, let's say they don't do that then they run the cod there there is a very good likelihood that some of that meat is going to get mixed into the cod diet and so if your pet truly does have an allergy a food allergy to um, beef or chicken or whatever that other diet is it's, it's going to get mixed in um, the prescription diets that veterinarians often will use for a food trial um, those plants because they're prescription those plants have to guarantee that that what they say is in it is all that is in it and so that's why they're more expensive they will process the food they will completely 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 break down the equipment clean it and you know so they can guarantee there is no other remnants of other diets I'm not saying that it is a necessary thing to do. I'm just saying this, be careful with using a diet um, that is not a prescription unless you really, really, really know the company and you know, you know maybe you call them and ask them how they process um, because you could have some of that crossover contamination there. And for a food trial, that's 12 weeks, 12 weeks that you have invested, 12 uh, you know money for the diet um, and you know you may get some ambiguous results if you don't use a diet that is specifically formulated for food trials. Um, and so veterinarians will use food trials um, to help form a diagnosis for your pet's allergy. Um, and so that's a diagnostic tool. And if the diagnostic tool has some ambiguity to it, it could throw off the diagnosis of your pet. Um, a lot of people ask me about the blood tests for food allergy. Those are not recommended. Um, they're, they're not really effective enough in animals. They're not accurate enough. Uh, veterinary dermatologists do not use those. And therefore, they ask us as general practitioners not to use the blood tests for um, diagnosis of food allergy you have to do the food trial so we want to make sure we're doing it correctly so that was a little bit of a tangent there it's it's not points off it's just you know that when they say single animal protein they are trying to appeal to you about that but it really is not appropriate in most cases for um for a food trial and we'll look in the ingredient list and see if there's anything there that may throw us off but um, you know you would really have to call the company and then you would have to feel confident in their answer uh, as far as how they process and clean the equipment you know, for this to be a food trial diet. Okay, so starting at the top, uh, AFCO statement. Uh, the NND cod pumpkin and orange orange recipe is formulated. So they just um, you know took a bunch of the information, the nutrient profiles, put it in a computer, boom, and they said, okay, here you go, you can sell it. It meets you know it meets the mark, but they didn't actually test it. Um, and an interesting thing with that on on grain free that I was thinking, you know, and sometimes I do thinking, and sometimes this thinking gets me in trouble. Um, I don't think that they would ever be able to do a life study on a grain-free diet to see if it actually causes heart disease because it, you know it may be unethical to feed a pet a food that we have a strong suspicion is causing heart disease. So I don't know that they will ever do a feeding trial or a longevity study on a grain-free diet. I don't know if anybody out there is watching that has inside information on that about that. Let me know, but. Um, I, you know, that, I don't know, that just popped into my head and that was a complete tangent. But anyway, they don't get a point for being formulated um, to meet the nutritional levels established by AFCO, nutrient profiles for maintenance. So it is for adult dogs, specifically for adults. That's what we wanted. They get a point. All right. Ingredients. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Cod, dehydrated cod. And so right there, we don't spend a lot of time in the ingredient list. You get one point if you're not grain free, you get one point if you're not raw. And um, this is kind of why. The ingredient list is based on volume, including water. And so um, it is not volume of nutrient, it is just complete volume. Water, although it is essential for life, it is not providing like the nutrients. It's not providing the fat, it's not providing the protein, calcium, minerals, all that stuff, it's just water. Um, and so you can see here, the first ingredient is cod, uh, you know, great. 
The next ingredient is dehydrated cod. That first ingredient, cod, you're not getting much there. You're actually probably getting the most of your moisture there. Um, and then the next ingredient, the dehydrated cod, that's actually where you're getting, you know, the good stuff that, that you need. So that's just a little side tangent on why, you know, I don't use the ingredient list or really harp upon it um, because there's a lot of manipulation that goes there. They put that cod first. They put specifically put the whole cod in there, not because it's providing nutrient. They put it in there because they know you're looking for it. Um, so please note that they are, they are trying to manipulate you a little bit with that um, because there's really no reason to put the whole cod in there. They literally are just doing that for your benefit um, because where it's coming from is the dehydrated cod. And then here we start getting into some of the warning things. The pea starch, pea is one of those pulses. Um, peas is one of those things that we're worried that are causing the heart problems. Um, it, you know, And so we're working through that. And so there's really no reason to feed a grain-free. It, it, it has no bearing on allergies. There literally is no reason to do it. So I don't the only reason they sell it is because you'll buy it and that's not a good reason, right? Herring oil, so you can see here, they're using a different um, type of fish, but it's still a fish uh, to do that dried pumpkin, more pea fiber, and so a little bit worrisome there, and then you go on and on and on. So I don't see any other animal fat there. So as long as this food is not processed with another food that is a different protein, you could potentially use that for a food trial, but you'd have to call the company um, and really feel confident in their answer if you're gonna spend 12 weeks um, you know, using this as a food trial diet. So they only get one point there. So, so far we're up to two points. And they provide some supplemental, uh, supplemental information down here. Some of the other amino acids and things, you can read through that. We're not gonna do that today. And then here you got the guaranteed analysis. It's gonna be listed minimums and maximums. We're not gonna use that. We want exacts. Um, we don't wanna live in this minimum and maximum world. We wanna know what we're dealing with. So I called the company and I got the information. Um, and we're gonna go to that now. All right, this chart um, that we're gonna be using comes from Small Animal Clinical Nutrition. It's a textbook, a widely accepted textbook that has these standards published uh, and they're the standards that we are going to use today. All right, so on the left or whatever side this is, I don't know if the camera flips it or not. Um, on this side, you've got your uh, dry matter basis exacts from the company Farmina. And then over here you have the information from Small Animal Clinical Nutrition. So protein 32.96, it should be, be between 15 and 30, so we're a little bit elevated there. Fat 19.78. Um, fat should be between 10 and 20, so that's good. Fiber 3.18, it should be less than five, so we're fine there. Calcium 0.87, 0 0.5 to one, that's excellent. It's very, you know, seems to be very hard sometimes for these companies to get the minerals correct, and so they seem to have done that, that's awesome. Phosphorus 0 0.76, it should be between 0 0.4 and 0 0.1, or excuse me, 0 0.8. So the only thing they're off here is the protein, and it's only slightly off. Um, so this is what I would say about that. Uh, protein is uh, obviously important for life, but more is not better. If you have a pet that is already diagnosed with kidney disease, has maybe some familial kidney disease in its history, um, is getting older where we know, you know, over the age of seven for certain breeds, maybe over the age of 10 for some other breeds, uh, that, you know, they're prone to having kidney issues, you might want to be careful with this. So senior, you might want to be careful with this because protein's not stored in the body. Um, the kidneys are the gatekeepers for protein. And so if there's too much, the kidneys have to process that. They have to kick that out. And when they're, you know, when they're doing that, they're, they're working. And so we don't want to overwork an already, you know, um, organ that may be having some issues. So that would be the only thing here. So be careful with that. Um, 32.96, a little bit over in the protein, um, a lot of people think that, you know, an older dog, as they get, you know, they're getting older, they're getting muscle wasting, they're getting skinny, um, that we need more protein to help put that back on that, you know, that's not true. They need the right amount of protein where they're going to get their energy and put the weight back on is on is with the fat. And so I think that's just a little bit of a fallacy that people have started to assume and the companies are happy to indulge. Um, but now you know better. So you're going to you're going to factor that in as you go through these pet foods because you you know better now. Um, OK. So that was that. Let's go to the feeding guide. And then we'll get onto cost. Feeding guide, um, you can download the feeding guide by clicking here. And so here is the feeding guide. Now, if you have been with me um, for any amount of time, and I thank you if you have, thank you, thank you guys um, that are here with me all the time, um, you can calculate the resting energy requirement. Um, you can use this chart that I'm gonna post here.
and um, you can calculate exactly what the resting energy requirement is. We always use 20 pounds because it's easy and I don't have to calculate it every single time. So we know that the resting energy requirement for about a 20 pound dog is 366. If you use the multiplier, um, so the 366, that's for an obese prone animal, which in my opinion, most animals are obese prone, you know, this day and age. Um, I usually use that, but if you want to use the multiplier, the multiplier is 1.6. That's for a spayed um, female or a neutered male. And so 366 to 580. This food is saying that we need to do um, 1 to 1.66 cups and it's 398 kcals per cup. So 398 um, so 398 times 1, that's going to be pretty close to that 366, so I think we're good there. If we do the, um, if we multiply it by 1.6, it gives us uh, 300 and, or 636, and so a little bit more than the 580 that it, it should be based on um, this particular multiplier. Now, there's a lot of multipliers out there, um, you know, that are theorized. So I think they're pretty close. I think they're going to be okay. I think if you follow the feeding guide on this one, you're going to be fine. So I'm going to go ahead and give them a point for that. Um, let's get into cost here. Uh, okay, five pound bag is $35.95. It's going to be $6.54 cents a pound. Um, if you go with the 26 pound bag, it's 99.95. So, you know, significant um, savings there, $3.79 a pound. Um, you can, like I said, you can buy it here on, you know, on their website. Um, and then you can also get it here on Chewy. So it's available to you. So let's count up the Let's count up the points. One for the AFCO statement, one for the um, feeding guidelines, one for the ingredient list. They lost it on the grain, um, the grain free thing. And then uh, four points on the guaranteed analysis because they lost it one point on the excessive levels of the protein. But it was pretty impressive that they did have the calcium phosphorus. A lot of companies don't, you know, don't get the points for that. So I'm actually really happy about that. So it's a seven. Um, okay, so seven. Uh, that, that's pretty good. Uh, you can go back and watch some of the earlier videos and see some of where the other videos stack up and how they compare to Farmina. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, leave me a comment. That's how I get information on what you guys want me to review next. It doesn't have to be food, guys. It can be anything. You can ask me any question you want, except for medical questions about your pets. Please don't do that. Ask your veterinarian that because, you know, that's just Please don't do that. But anyway, you can ask me any general questions you guys want, products, whatever, and we will hang out again. I enjoyed it. I hope you guys did too, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.